This is the second in our series of videos dealing with reaction types. In this video, we're going to focus on single replacement reactions, which are a subtype of redox reactions. In a single replacement reaction, we have to understand that some elements are going to be more active than other elements, and we can rank these elements by the reactivity. A more reactive metal can replace a less active metal cation in a compound or a more reactive nonmetal can replace a less active nonmetal anion in a compound. The easiest way of recognizing this reaction is to see that we have an element that has been uncombined with an ionic compound. The general formats are with the metal replacement having a metal, here represented by A, reacting with ionic compound BC, where B represents the metal ion in the compound. And on the product side, we'll see that B has been replaced and is now by itself, and metal A is part of the ionic compound in the product side. A very similar thing is happening with non-metal replacement. In this case, A represents non-metal, B represents the metal or positively charged cation, and C represents the negatively charged anion. C then on the product side will be by itself. It is re being replaced by A. And we'll see that we have compound BA where B represents the positive cation and comes first in our compound formulas. And A is now the negative anion in our compound. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. We'll start off with our metal replacement. In review, we have element A which is representing a metal. We have ionic compound BC Metal A starts off with a zero for an oxidation state. In our compound, B is our positively charged cation, and C is our negatively charged anion. In this case, B would represent a metal element of some sort. C could be any kind of anion, polyatomic or monatomic. B is going to be by itself. We're going to be having a, tr a trading of places here. A is going to replace B. Our compound then on the product side is going to be made up of AC and we'll see that A is now a positively charged cation and C is a negatively charged anion. B is a neutral element. Let's apply this pattern to these two reactions we see below. In the first reaction we're going to look at here, it's zinc reacting with copper 2 nitrate. In this reaction, the zinc and the copper are going to trade places. Zinc will replace the copper. Zinc is going to start off as a zero oxidation state. The copper is a two plus oxidation state, and we see it the anion of, neg of one negative for the nitrate. We start off by placing copper by itself, since it's going to be replaced by the zinc. And zinc will go with the nitrate. Now zinc forms a two plus oxidation state, so we still have a subscript two on the nitrate. And our oxidation state for the copper will be zero. Oxidation state for the zinc now is two plus, and the oxidation state of the nitrate didn't change at one negative. We can also see that this is a redox reaction. The zinc has been oxidized. It's lost two electrons to go from a neutral element on the reactant side to the two plus cation on the product side. As well, our copper has changed. It's been reduced. We've gone from a two plus and gained two electrons to form a zero oxidation state on the product side. All single replacement reactions are going to be a redox reaction. In our last reaction, we're gonna look at the single replacement reaction between aluminum and silver nitrate. Aluminum is going to replace the silver in the silver nitrate. Aluminum starts off with a zero oxidation state. Silver starts off with a one plus, and nitrate we know is a one negative. Silver will be by itself. The aluminum is gonna go with the nitrate. And we see that in this case, because aluminum is going to form a three plus oxidation state, to balance the charge with the nitrate, we must have three nitrates in the formula. We then balance the reaction because we don't have equal numbers of elements on both sides. So we put a coefficient of three in front of the silver nitrate and a coefficient of three in front of the silver. This balances all the atoms in the reaction. And last, we can look at what the oxidation states have changed to. 
The silver is going to be a zero oxidation state. Aluminum has turned into a three plus cation, and the nitrate has stayed the same at one negative. And we can see again that we have a redox reaction. The second type of single replacement reaction is nonmetal replacement. Very similar. In fact, the only difference is that in this replacement reaction, a nonmetal will trade places with another nonmetal. In review, our overall reaction is going to look like metal, in this case, A representing a nonmetal, reacting with the ionic compound BC. A will have a zero oxidation state. B is going to be our cation with a positive charge. C is our anion with a negative charge. This time around, A and C will be trading places because C is going to be the nonmetal. So C will be by itself, and our product will be BA. The order here is important because positive cations are going to be first in our formulas. So C becomes a zero oxidation state. B stays and keeps its charge as positive, but A has gone from zero to form a negative cation. Our first example, we're going to have oxygen with a zero oxidation state reacting with zinc sulfide. The zinc is a 2 plus and the sulfur is a 2 minus. The sulfur is going to be replaced, so sulfur will be by itself on the product side. The zinc and the oxygen will then form a compound. We are going to drop the subscript 2 on the oxygen because zinc is going to have a 2 plus oxidation state and oxygen will have a 2 minus oxidation state. Therefore, we only need to have one of each. We balance the reaction to make sure that everything is equal on both sides. And we see that our oxygen has gone from a 0 to a 2 negative. Our zinc has stayed the same as a 2 plus, And our sulfur has gone from a 2 negative to a 0 oxidation state. That means our reduction is with the oxygen because it has gained electrons. And our oxidation is with the sulfur because it has lost electrons. In our last example, we're going to look at the replacement reaction between fluorine and hydrogen chloride. The chloride, in this case, is going to be the nonmetal and will be replaced by the fluorine in our reaction. Again, we start off with a zero oxidation state for our nonmetal. We have a one plus oxidation state for our hydrogen and a one minus for our chloride. On the product side, chlorine will be by itself. And in this case, when chlorine is by itself, and as we will see, it will have an oxidation state of zero. It has to have the subscript two. Remember, it's one of the diatomic molecules. It's the same reason why the fluorine has a subscript two on the reactant side. Our fluorine and hydrogen are going to react. Hydrogen comes first because it's going to be, it's going to have the cation, and the fluorine is the anion, and we always have the positive first and negative second. We lose the subscript two on the fluorine because the hydrogen will be a one plus and the fluorine will be a one minus, and we balance the charges to make the formula correct. We add coefficients to make sure that the reaction is balanced overall, and we see that our final equation, we have our fluorine going from a zero oxidation state to a one minus oxidation state, chlorine going from a one minus to a zero, hydrogen staying the same. Overall, single replacement reactions are a reaction between a single element and an ionic compound. In the reaction, a metal, if it's the single element, will trade places with the metal in the ionic compound. If the single element is a nonmetal, it will trade places with a nonmetal in the ionic compound.